today I'm sharing my top tips for decluttering paper as well as how we organize our paper as a minimalist family. If you're new here, you can hit the subscribe button to join my channel. It's all about decluttering, minimalism, simple living, organizing, all that type of stuff. And this month, I'm happy to join all of my fellow decluttering channels in a huge playlist that was put together by The Minimal Mom, and I will link that down below for a whole bunch of decluttering inspiration. Let's get started with the best tips to stay clutter-free when it comes to paper. The best tip I can give you is to avoid paper altogether. Don't have it come in your house at all. And I do this by setting up all of my bills online. I go paperless, so I get an email, and then I can just save the bill on my computer in a file that is very organized and completely paperless. The best way to stay very organized and minimal when it comes to paper is to deal with the paper that comes into your house immediately. Don't make a big giant stack of things to open later. The second I get my mail, I open it up, decide if it's important or if it's not. If it's not important, I recycle the paper immediately. If it is important, I put it straight on my desk to deal with again immediately. I personally hate having big stacks of paper that I need to get to at some point. I just can't stand that. So I try to deal with everything by the end of that day so that way I don't have a bunch of paper piles everywhere. The next thing I've done is unsubscribed to everything that is unnecessary. So any flyers or junk mail that comes in, I try to find a phone number on there that says unsubscribe or take me off the list and I just get rid of everything that I can that comes in the mail that is pretty much junk. Any coupons, flyers, ads, those all go straight into the recycling bin for me because I find coupons are just another way to convince you you think you need something to buy when you don't really need it. So all of that for me goes straight into the recycling bin right away. I don't even set it down. It's just a determination that I make immediately and straight recycled. Once you've set up all of those habits and routines, you're gonna find that you have way less paper to deal with right off the bat. And I can tell you from my experience way back uh, when we first started decluttering a few years ago, I had a three drawer file cabinet. It was enormous and I was able to fill it. I thought at the time that every single thing that came into my house, whether it was a little note from the doctor or some kind of height and weight thing from the doctor for my kids, I had to save all that. So I would just file it and I never thought of it again. I never looked at it again. And then when I started decluttering all of my paper, I went through all of those files and I realized 80%, maybe 90% of what I had in there, I did not need. It was completely pointless. So I made sure to shred all of those papers and recycle them, get them out of my home. And I realized at that point, I did not even need the three drawer file cabinet. I could fit everything into my file box. This is all of the paper that I keep. As a minimalist family, I try to keep only the things that we truly need to have, like our birth certificates and important documents like that. And I also keep all the receipts and things that we need for taxes. I have a special file just for taxes that I start every January and I can put everything that I need for the taxes that are gonna be coming at the end of the year into that file so I know exactly where to go to access that information. And I'm able to store all of that in this file box. The one thing I do not have in this file box is back taxes, but I have each of them by year in a folder. I keep the folders of back taxes in this little drawer here, and I go from oldest to newest on the top. As the new year comes in, I get rid of the oldest one. So I only keep seven years, that's it. I get rid of them as soon as the new one's in. I almost forgot to tell you the most game changer of tips is to store all of your paper in one location. I store everything in this closet in my office. If you don't have an office, I would suggest making some kind of area where you can put all of your paper, so all the bills, whatever you have to store, 
all in one area it makes it so much easier and then if there's ever someone in your home that needs to find something they know at least if they go to this one location they're more likely to find what they're looking for rather than having little areas in the kitchen and in an office and in a bedroom just put it all in one spot this helped me so much Let's talk kids stuff. I have two boys and this right here is how I store all of their stuff that I wanna keep. In these simple binders is where I store my children's artwork, certificates, important things that I think that they've made that they may want when they get older or I might want just to look back on. So for instance, in here I have uh, my youngest son's handprint he did for me and I make sure that I go through these often because I don't want to have duplicate items in here or I just want to keep the best things that they've made and I don't want to keep too much because I can tell you my mom handed me a humongous bin of my stuff from my childhood that I quickly went through and realized I didn't want any of it. So I try to keep just a few things to remember each year as they're getting older. You can see this is my older son's book and he's already got quite a lot in here. At the end of kindergarten, they handed us a bunch of stuff. I stuck it in here and we still need to go through it. This may sound crazy to some people, but I do not keep all of my kids' art projects. There's just too much, but we do celebrate their art by hanging it. So. Here's an example of my youngest son's art or crafts. We hang them up so they can enjoy them. They love looking at them and they're so proud of what they do. So we let this hang up for a while and then as new pro projects come in, we will switch it out. Sometimes these will go into the book to save, but a lot of the time we will just recycle these once they forget about them and we'll hang up the new art project. So this is one way that we can celebrate the kids' art uh, and let them enjoy it so they don't feel as though we're just getting rid of it right away. And then I am off the hook for having to keep everything for the rest of our lives. This is how I deal with paper as a minimalist. I truly only keep what I need and deal with everything immediately if possible. I have a full blog post on this topic and I will link it down below. I have all the steps on how we stay clutter free when it comes to paper and ways you can declutter paper and go through your stuff. I also have a decluttering ebook which I will also link down below on our exact process of how we decluttered everything in our lives step by step with examples. So if you're interested in that, it will all be in the description box. And make sure you check out the decluttering playlist for this week. We're doing a different decluttering video for every week in the month of January. So this is the paper declutter week. And next week, we will be having another decluttering video, sentimental items. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of these decluttering projects and videos. And thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.